Interesting, Tim, of course, you've published today this great story that features Sky Futures. This is all about the future where drones are, well, disrupting the market a little bit when it comes to oil. Yeah, well, we called it uh, robots replacing roughnecks, really. Um, uh, you know, we, instead of dangling a guy from a wire hanging down the rig, you just fly a drone. And, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, traditionally in the industry, you'd have to shut these monstrous things down uh, because, you know, you've got, you know, belching fire and, and they're hot and dangerous and explosive. But, uh, you know, you don't have to do that with a drone. You just send it up and it's got infrared cameras and things like that. And so it's a whole different world. James, talk to us about your whole different world. Who are you working with at the moment? How, how much are you already seeing the appetite for this going forward? Sure, yeah, great question. I mean, it's, um, it's come on a hell of a lot in the last couple of years. So we've got over 36 clients globally now. Um, and we're seeing a variation in the different markets. So with a low oil price, there's obviously increased pressure to cut costs. Um, Southeast Asia has been a particularly buoyant market. They really have taken technology very fast. Um, and we've just got our permission in the States, so we've just set up our Houston office. We've got the, actually the 46th exemption from the uh, FAA, from the Federal Aviation Authority, um, to enable us to work there. So we're expecting a huge uptake, uptake in, the, uh, in the American market in particular. So actually for once, a downward spiral in oil prices are helping some industries, helping yours, helping trying to bring in lower costs. Talk to us about the risks that you face, because of course we know the risks that someone dangling from a wire might experience, but drones, there must be some, some technology risks, but also the amount of money that you're having to plough into these sorts of things. Sure, yeah, I think with any, any new technology, it's, it's very difficult to know exactly what's required. So we took a very different approach. We went to service the market for about four years first, understanding what the service would be, because it didn't exist five years ago. Yeah. So by delivering the service and understanding what parts we could automate, and by talking to customers every day, we then took that into our technology, into the CTO, and said, right, we need to automate this, or we need to devise some algorithms to investigate this or this. So we've actually got new products coming out which have been directly led by our customers. So people like Shell, BG Group, have actually come back to us and said, we need to measure this, or we need to check this sort of certain problem. So we work out the market size, work out the, the technology, and put it together. So we're cutting our risk um, on the technology side significantly. I mean, tell us already what your drones can accomplish because they're not just circling around taking pictures they're actually analyzing take it they can preempt damage to an oil rig before you'd ever know about it absolutely that and that's the really big thing here so we call it like a pre shutdown inspection um, so when you've got a, an oil rig that's online typically you can't look at it until you shut it down and then you might find some nasty surprises so areas that are hot or dangerous to inspect or impossible to inspect when it's still on um, you may suddenly find that it's got a major crack or some major damage, which means you have to keep it shut down for longer. So by inspecting them when they're still live, you can avoid further shutdowns and further costs. I mean, a really good example, working for a very big North American oil producer um, out in Southeast Asia, two months before they were due to shut down, we went and inspected what's the flare tip, essentially the pressure valve on, a, on an oil rig, um, realized there was some cracking on, a, on a quite a new piece of equipment. Um, we were able to work with them using our technical experts to help them provide a fix. Um, they managed to fix it and avoid a further shutdown later on in the year. So on a, on a very conservative estimate, we're saving around $6 million. I mean, this is great that it's actually UK companies leading the four here in terms of technology. I know that you've just recently raised some investment from MMC Ventures. Lota, you're an investment manager. I mean, is this an area that you're looking at where technology can help dis disrupt and, and actually cut costs for, for larger industries? In terms of sectors, we're, we're at the moment quite positive towards technology. We think there's quite a few exciting things in the pipeline. I'm very excited to, to hear that. For me, drones were so far more of a, a, of a, a toy, a game, and, and this is some very serious, um, very good application of, of, of drone technology. So I think it's great. Um, I want to move on to some of our online content that we've got as well as this fantastic story on, on drones because we've also got some potentially interesting news coming out of Greece. We know that there's a snap election being called, but olive oil is still going great guns, potentially. Uh, it's actually doing really well is, is what the story is all about. And um, it's uh, unfortunately, the, obviously, drought in Spain. Uh, there's what they're calling the olive Ebola gripping Italy, killing trees all over southern Italy. Uh, that's devastated their their olive oil, their olive crop as well, and uh, and Greek producers are increasing production and grabbing a bigger bigger share of the market. And in fact, if you go to the wholesaler Costco, their uh, their own brand olive oil now has a blue cap, Aegean blue instead of Spanish moss green.